All right, so welcome back to the Algebra 2 final exam review. Um, in this video, we're going to cover section 12, where we have things that are in uh, radical form, and we're going to write them in exponential form. So if you just watched the previous video, uh, remember that radical form looks like this, where we have an exponent that is a fraction. Uh, and radical form is when we have this, well, radical symbol. Um, so I recommend watching this video, at least the intro of it, before we start with the problems, so you can get some background information on all of this, if you didn't do that already. But uh, I'm assuming you're all just returning from this previous video. So uh, let's get started. So working backwards now, we have number 157. And that one is the cube root of v to the power of 2. So if we remember that, uh, remember this number here, the index, was the bottom of our fraction. And this number here, uh, the exponent, was the top of our fraction. So we take what is ever inside of our root symbol, in this case this is v, and we just rearrange it like that. This number is going to go on top. So we have 2 over this number, which is 3. So we have v to the power of 2 over 3. For number 158, we have the square root of 7n to the power of 5. So it may be useful to remember that this is already simplified when, we're, uh, when we see it. And when we don't see an index here, this is implicitly a 2. So we can rewrite this as whatever we had. Um, remember to put, if we have multiple things, so in this one we didn't have to do this. Uh, we just had v. But since we have 7n, we want to remember to put this in parentheses. 7n. And then this number on uh, this exponent here, 5, is the number on top of your fraction. And this number over here, the index, is the bottom. So we have 7n to the power of 5 over 2. For number 159, we have the cube root of 7b squared. So something important to note is that whatever is inside of your uh, radical, it's going to go inside parentheses. So even though there is a 2 here, it's not on the outside like it is out, you know, in the previous two problems. So in parentheses, you put your 7b squared. Uh, so just whatever is inside your radical, put everything inside parentheses. And now notice that we don't have a number out here for our exponent. So these previous two, they're in parentheses and they have an exponent. But this one doesn't have that. Recall that anything to the power of 1 is itself. So really, what this means is that we have all of this to the power of 1. And so now it's a little bit more obvious which one of these, you know, where, what numbers we have to work with here. Uh, this number here, the exponent, is our numerator for our fraction. And the index here is our denominator. So this is 7b squared to the power of 1 over 3. Or we can remember this property that the cube root of anything is equal to itself to the one-third power. So that is an alternative approach that we could have used uh, to look at this. So the cube root of 7b to the second is just 7b to the second to the one-third power by definition of the cube root, um, which we get from this property right here. For number 160, we have the cube root of 5n, and this is all squared. So this one's nicer because it's easy to identify what uh, the denominator is going to be and what the numerator is going to be. So whatever we have inside the radicand, we have 5n, and it's going to be raised to the power of 2 
over 3. And now we're done. By the way, that one was our final answer. And this is our final answer for 160. Looking at 161. For number 161, we have the square root of 6x to the power of 5. If we don't see a number here, remember that's a 2. And so we're going to have 6x in parentheses to the power of 5 over 2. And so this is our final answer. For number 162, we have the sixth root of v. Um, we can recall by from definition that the nth root of anything is equal to that same thing, to the 1 over n power. Um, so using that, we can actually just use this rule where n is equal to 6 and write this as v to the 1 6th power. And so that is our final answer. For number 163, we have the fourth root of x to the power of 5. So this one's nice because we have an easily, identify easily identifiable index and exponent here. This is just going to be x to the power of 5 over 4. And so this is our final answer. For number 164, we have the square root of 5n. And we can use the same approach that we've been using, or we can again recall that the square root of anything is equal to that same thing to the 1 half power. And so we can rewrite this as, oops, wrong form. Oh, wait, yeah, 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 we need to do that. Okay, so we put 5n in parentheses, and the square root just means to the 1 half power. So square root of 5n is 5n to the 1 half power. And that's our final answer. For number 165, we have the cube root of 7k to the power of 5. We can rewrite this as 7k to the power of 5 over 3. For number 166, we have the cube root of k also to the power of 5. So similar to the one above it, this is going to be k to the power of 5 over 3. So k to the power of 5 over 3. For number 167, we have the fourth root of 3n to the power of 3. This is just going to be 3n in parentheses to the power of 3 over 4. And for the last one for this section, we have 168. This one is the square root of 2x to the power of 3. Implicitly, we have a 2 right there. And so we can write this as 2x power of 3 over 2. And that's our final answer. So that concludes this section. And yeah, so I will see you on the next one.